Hey, ChatGPT, what do you know about the physics of the Day of Judgment according to the Quran? And what is the end of time and the time reversal? It's quite confusing to me. Could you elaborate in 30 seconds? Quran Surah Al-Hajj Chapter 22 Verse 7 And that the hour is coming, no doubt about it, and that Allah will resurrect those who are in the graves. This verse emphasizes the certainty of the Day of Judgment and the resurrection of all individuals for accountability. Cleophy, in Islamic eschatology, the Day of Judgment, Yom al qayyamah is a pivotal event where all individuals are resurrected and held accountable for their deeds. The Quran describes it as a day of reckoning, where the universe undergoes significant upheaval, leading to the end of the world. The end of time refers to this ultimate conclusion of human history, marking the final judgment. Time reversal is a concept that suggests a transformation of reality, where the normal flow of time may be altered, allowing for events to unfold differently or to reflect the divine justice of God. This idea emphasizes the omnipotence of God over time and existence. Thank you so much, ChatGPT. Let's dive deeper into this chapter together with Jack and Wilson. Hey everyone, before we dive into that, I was delving into my YouTube channel analytics and noticed most of you who watch my videos are not subscribed to the channel. Would you do me a huge favor, please, and hit the subscribe button? It really motivates me and helps the channel to grow so I can do more videos just like the one you're about to watch. So without further ado, let's dive in. All right, strap in everybody because we are going deep today. Diving into some pretty heavy stuff. That's right. We are going to be looking at uh, the Day of Judgment. But with a twist. Yeah, not your typical fire and brimstone (laughs) sermon. No, we're bringing physics into the picture. We're going to be exploring a 1982 academic paper. The Physics of the Day of Judgment. I know it sounds a little out there. Right, like something out of a sci-fi movie. But trust me on this one, folks, it's a fascinating read. It really is. And this isn't just some random internet theory. No, no, this is a serious academic paper. Written by Dr. Muhammad Humiyun Khan. Over 40 years ago. So we're talking about some serious intellectual history here. A real time capsule of scientific and theological thought. And before we dive any deeper, I want to be upfront about something. Yeah, it's important to be clear. We are not here to debate anyone's beliefs. Right, this isn't about proving or disproving anything. We're simply going to explore Dr. Khan's ideas. How he connects Quranic verses to physics concepts. You know, like time reversal gravity shifts? Even higher dimensions. It's mind-blowing stuff. Really makes you wonder, can science illuminate a concept? Like the Day of Judgment, which is traditionally seen through... A purely religious lens. Exactly. So let's find out. Let's find out. Okay, so the paper starts off by comparing resurrection. You know, the idea of coming back to life... To something we see all the time in nature. Plant growth. Both are natural processes. Driven by a higher power. And Dr. Khan actually uses a Quran verse to support this idea. Verse 35.9. It links God's power to revive dead land with the power to... So the dead it. So it's like he's grounding this fantastical concept. In something we can observe. Something relatable. It's a pretty cool way to think about it. It really is. Okay, now here's where things get really interesting. We're going cosmic. Yeah, we're going to talk about cosmology. The study of the universe. You're probably familiar with the Big Bang Theory. The idea that the universe started from a single point. And has been expanding ever since. Right. And we know this thanks to Edwin Hubble. The astronomer. He discovered that galaxies are moving away from each other. Like raisins in a rising loaf of bread. Exactly. And that's where those Quranic connections come back in. Yeah, the paper points out that the Quran actually mentions... Both the initial unity of the heavens and the earth. That's verse... 21.30. And the concept of the heavens expanding. Verse 51.47. And remember, these verses were revealed centuries. Before modern science validated these concepts. Makes you think, right. It really does. Like, how much ancient wisdom are we overlooking? Exactly. But here's the question. Is the universe just going to... Expand forever? Yeah. I mean, is that it? Well, Dr. Khan suggests it might not be so straightforward. Oh, really? So he doesn't think it's just going to keep expanding? Not necessarily. He proposes a theory. Okay. I'm all ears. What if the universe isn't endlessly expanding? Hmm. Interesting. So what's he saying? Like, it's going to stop expanding. We even suggest that the 1998 discovery... Of the universe's accelerating expansion... The one scientists are still scratching their heads over. Yeah, the one there. He thinks it might actually be an illusion. An illusion? Wait a minute. Hold on. How could that be an illusion? Think of it this way. Imagine you're watching a car race. All right. As the cars speed up, 
they seem to be moving further and further apart. Right. Makes sense. But what if at the same time, your own perception of time was slowing down? Ah, uh, okay. I see. So it would make the cars appear... To be moving apart even faster than they actually are? Because our clocks are slowing down too. Precisely. So is he saying that our perception of time might be slowing down? As the universe expands. Wow. Okay, so we're measuring a slowing expansion with the slowing clock? Which makes it look like things are speeding up. That is mind bending. Right. Okay, so if the universe isn't expanding forever... What happens then? Yeah, does it just stop? Well, Dr. Khan suggests something even more radical. Okay, hit me with it. What if the universe starts to contract? Whoa. Okay, wait. He cites several Quran versus 69.1, 78.40, and 21.104. Oh, okay. That describes some pretty intense imagery. The earth being crushed, the heavens rolling up like a scroll, wow. and the whole creation process repeating itself. Okay, so he's connecting these verses to the idea of a contracting universe. Exactly. But what happens to time if the universe starts to shrink? That's where things get really wild. Okay, lay it on me. Dr. Khan proposes that time could actually reverse. Reverse? Like, go backwards? During the universe's contraction phase. Hold on, you're telling me time could run in reverse. That's what he suggested. I mean, is that even possible? Well, before you dismiss it as pure science fiction. Okay. It's important to know that physicists like Michael Berry, Thomas Gold, and even Stephen Hawking, have all theorized about the possibility of time reversal. Wow. Okay, <laughs> so this isn't just some crazy idea. It's a concept that's been seriously considered by some brilliant minds. All right, so if time can actually reverse, that raises a big question. Yeah, what happens to us? I mean, do we unlive our lives? Like a rewind button on existence. That's a lot to think about. It really is. Okay, but wait, there's more? Oh yeah, we're just getting started. This is where Dr. Khan introduces the hollow earth theory. And things get really strange. Hollow earth, what's that all about? He suggests that if gravity were to reverse during this contraction phase, oh, Okay. It could cause the Earth to essentially turn inside out. It's inside out. Becoming hollow with the sky at its center. Whoa, hold on. I need to picture this. A hollow Earth with the sky in the middle. Yeah, it's a pretty mind-bending concept. It sounds like something out of a fantasy novel. But we can actually connect this to some current scientific understanding of what? Black holes. Black holes? How do those fit in? Well, some physicists believe that black holes with their immense gravity... Yeah could act as gateways to other dimensions. Okay, now that's interesting. Right. So he's connecting this to those Quran verses about gates in the sky opening. Exactly, verse 78.19. He's interpreting these gates as portals to other dimensions. And he links them to black holes. So in this scenario, black holes become doorways to other dimensions. That's his idea. But here's the twist. Okay, what's the twist? In a contracting universe, the blocked nature of black holes where nothing can escape might change so things could actually pass through them potentially okay so what are these higher dimensions anyway i mean i get length width and height but more than that it's hard to wrap my head around it okay imagine an ant crawling on a rope uh -huh. to the ant the rope is just a line of one dimensional world okay but we know the rope actually exists in three dimensions right Higher dimensions are a bit like that. They, they exist beyond our normal perception. So there could be all these dimensions we can't even see. Exactly. Think of our three-dimensional world as a flat sheet of paper. All right, I'm with you. Now imagine that sheet being folded in ways we can't see. Oh, okay. Those folds would represent higher dimensions. Existing beyond our normal perception. But, but potentially accessible through those gates in the sky. Whoa! Okay, I think I'm starting to get it. It's definitely mind-blowing stuff. So Dr. Khan is weaving together these scientific concepts with Quranic verses. To paint a picture of a contracting universe reversing time. A hollow earth and gateways to other dimensions. It's an incredible scenario. Absolutely mind-blowing. But how does this all play out on the Day of Judgment itself? What happens to us? Yeah, what happens to humanity during all of this? That's what we'll explore in part two of this deep dive. Can't wait for that. We'll delve into Dr. Khan's interpretations of Quranic descriptions. Of eclipses, angels. And the final journey beyond this universe. Get ready for some more mind-blowing insights. It's going to be wild. This is already one of the most fascinating deep dives we've ever done. A real head trip. I know, it's incredible stuff. It truly is. All right, folks, make sure you tune in for part two. We'll be back to unravel more of this cosmic mystery. And trust me, you won't want to miss it. Thank you for joining us for today's podcast. I hope you've gained some valuable insights. If you're a truth seeker, 
yearning for divine light and ready to step out of darkness, now is your moment. The truth is that Allah is the one and only creator of the universe. He has sent over 124,000 messengers and prophets to guide humanity, starting with Adam and culminating with the final messenger, Prophet Muhammad. Peace be upon them all. If you resonate with this message, you might be ready to embrace Islam. Simply recite the Shahada, the Islamic Declaration of Faith. For further support, feel free to join our WhatsApp group. You can send us a private message there. The link is in the video description. Don't wait until it's too late. We look forward to connecting with you soon.